Billy, I can't do it without you. And I gotta do it, Billy. You're using her, man. You're just using her. You're gonna leave her hanging and walk away. Hey, hello everybody, this is DJ Jerry. Now, while much of Bob Dylan's song catalog is cinematically visual, Dylan himself has appeared in over a dozen films throughout his life. Though he's dismissed as a viable actor, some of his on-screen ventures, movies, etc. serve as important milestones documenting his prolific and wide-ranging career. Even though Bob Dylan has appeared in over a dozen films, today we'll focus primarily on his acting roles. All right, the first motion picture we're going to discuss today is called Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid from Columbia Pictures in 1973. This film was shot in Durango, Mexico. Besides scoring the entire Grammy-nominated soundtrack for this American revisionist Western drama, Bob Dylan penned Knockin' on Heaven's Door exclusively for the film. This film is about an aging Pat Garrett, played by James Coburn, who is hired as a lawman by a group of wealthy New Mexico cattle barons to bring down his old friend Billy the Kid, played by then-newcomer Chris Christofferson. Once again, slotted for a larger role, a camera-shy Bob Dylan was recast as Alias, a quiet knife-throwing hooligan in Billy's gang. In one of Bob Dylan's few speaking parts, Pat Garrett asks Alias, Who are you? And Alias answers in perfectly scripted, Dylan elusiveness. That's a good question. That's your name, boy. Alias. Alias what? Alias anything you please. What do we call you? Alias. Hell, just call him Alias. That's what I'd do. Alias it is. This movie was released on video in 1988, leading to a reevaluation with many critics hailing it as a mistreated classic and one of the era's best films. It's ranked 126 on Empire Magazine's list of the 500 greatest movies of all time. Ronaldo and Clara is a four hour 1978 American film directed by Bob Dylan and starring Bob Dylan, Sarah Dylan, and Joan Baez. Written by Dylan and Sam Shepard, the film includes three distinct film genres concert footage, documentary interviews, and dramatic fictional vignettes reflective of Dylan's song, lyrics, and life. I have places that I have to be. And fades away. Are you sure you had the right room? Lying to me, would you lie to me? I hate lying. Me too. This movie was filmed in the fall of 1975, prior to and during Bob Dylan's Rolling Thunder review tour. Rinaldo and Clara was released in its original four hour form on January 25th, 1978. Its limited release in theaters in New York City, Los Angeles, and other cities was discontinued after a few weeks following widespread negative reviews. The style, structure, and thematic elements of Rinaldo and Clara were heavily influenced by the French film Les Enfants du Paradis. Similarities between the two films 
included the use of whiteface on Bob Dylan, the recurring flower, the woman in white, played by Joan Baez, the onstage and backstage scenes and dialogue of both films, and the running time is also relatively similar. The next movie we will feature is called Hearts of Fire, and it's from 1987. In this forgotten film, fading rock and roller Billy Parker, Bob Dylan, takes fledgling musician wannabe Molly McGuire, played by Fiona Flanagan, under his wing and on the road. But when the younger rock and roller James Colt, that was played by Rupert Everett, rolls in, Miss McGuire predictably shifts affection and turns into a love triangle plot with some great performances. Dylan covered John Hyatt's song, The Usual, for the film. I love the usual. On top of contributing two original songs called Night After Night and Had a Dream About Your Baby, the movie had mixed reviews. However, it seems that the approval rating was based on whether the viewer was a fan of Bob Dylan or not. Next movie we're going to talk about today is called Catch Fire, and that one was made in 1990. Bob Dylan appears in a cameo cast as an avant-garde artist in this Dennis Hopper film called Catch Fire, which was later renamed Backtrack in a director's cut version. Catch Fire is a 1990 American romantic action thriller film directed by Dennis Hopper and starring Jodie Foster. The story of a hitman, Dennis Hopper, who falls in love with his intended victim, Jodie Foster, a Los Angeles conceptual artist who witnessed some murders by the mob, is part road movie, part chase thriller, and part oddball romance with a kinky edge. Sometimes the casting in a film is so peculiar and unique that you feel compelled to take a chance on it no matter how many negative things you've heard about it. Well, wouldn't you want to see a movie that featured Jodie Foster, the master of horror himself, Vincent Price, Joe Pesci, Charlie Sheen, Dean Stockwell, Bob Dylan, and numerous other well-known stars. Bob Dylan plays a chainsaw-wielding artist, reputedly modeled after Venice-based California legend Laddie John Dill. Bob Dylan naturally exudes an effortless charisma and mystique. The film was disowned by Dennis Hopper before release, and he is therefore credited under the pseudonym Alan Smithy. All right, we're coming up on our next film, which is called Paradise Cove. This one comes from the year 1999. And the quote from the movie is, you can bury the man, but not his secrets. Now there's a hook that warrants a double take. How anyone induced Bob Dylan to play Alfred the Chauffeur in this obscure thriller starring Ben Gazzara and Karen Black is anyone's guess. Was the Dylan franchise suffering an economic stranglehold forcing Dylan to break down an act? Could Dylan have been kicking it on an adjacent set and mistaken for an extra? Regardless, you can't miss the beauty of the Dylan as chauffeur analogy here. So leave the driving to Bob. The next movie I'd like to focus on is called Masked and Anonymous from 2003. This is Dylan's tragic comic take on the end of times. Co-writer Dylan plays rock icon Jack Fate, who prophetically examines the futuristic Far West, a ruined wasteland of decadence and cold totalitarianism. The film stars a score of A-list actors like John Goodman, Jeff Bridges, Penelope Cruz, Ed Harris, Bruce Stern, 
etc. Everybody seemed to want in on Dylan's film, naturally. And iconic rock legend Jack Fate, Bob Dylan, is bailed out of prison to perform a one-man benefit concert for a decaying future North American society. The film touches on many subjects from the futility of politics, the confusion of loosely strung government conspiracies, and the chaos created by both anarchy and 1984 style totalitarianism. It further reflects on life, dreams, and God's place in a seemingly increasingly chaotic world. Jack Fate, played by Bob Dylan, makes it clear that he was always a singer and maybe no more than that. He produced no solutions to any of the problems the film presents. Rather, he makes it clear that he stopped trying to figure everything out a long time ago. Despite its mixed reception, this film will stand forever as an underground classic the testament of a savage eye bent on challenging the consumer culture to question itself. Politics and money is the mother's milk of politics and will be a raking it in. Its motives and its mores. Instead of the human being, now today we do it the other way around. We sacrifice the human being. Like the Incas, like the Aztecs, like the big corporations. Amazing grace indeed. Hey, howdy. What was that all about? Guys and animals, I guess. This next one is an honorable mention. It's really not an acting role in a film, but Bob Dylan transformed the 30-second commercial into a movie. And what I'm talking about right now is Dylan's Victoria's Secrets ad that came out in 2004. The ad proved to be memorable, but more out of a tendency to unsettle and baffle viewers who were familiar with Bob Dylan. Here's another one of those Dylan controversies that just as talked about today as it was after its 2004 airing. Dylan not only gave Victoria's Secret permission to use one of his songs for a skimpy lingerie ad, but he also starred in it. And this Norrish 30-second sketch backed by Time Out of Mind's Lovesick, Bob Dylan is presented as the aging, goateed, Stetson-wearing man in a long black coat who steals his lusty desires for the vestal charms of a lingerie-clad angel seductress with sky-gray eyes. After watching this artfully classy clip, it's hard to find any reason for criticism. And you're forced to ask yourself, well, wouldn't you appear in it if you were asked? This is DJ Jerry reminding you that there's a lot more to Bob Dylan than just the song and dance man. And if you get a chance, try to watch some of these lost classics in their entirety. And leave me some comments on what you thought of these movies. Well, don't forget to watch Bob Dylan movies. And keep on rocking. Bye now. I've been getting here for Tell me, we wind up with Jack Fate. Well, Jack, nobody's more like it. You couldn't get anybody else, could you? That didn't even cross my mind. I might have a few songs left. But it's all said and done. Time ends up killing us.